we're going to be looking at nuclear fission and fusion. Fission occurs when a large nucleus splits into two lighter nuclei together with some neutrons being emitted. It could be two or three neutrons. Fission is rarely spontaneous. It has to be induced by bombarding the fissile nucleus with a neutron. The fissile nucleus absorbs the neutron resulting in an unstable compound nucleus whose parts repel each other electrostatically so that the fragments fly apart, that is the lighter nuclei fly apart and you also get some neutrons being released and this process results in overall energy being released. Fusion occurs when two light nuclei join together to form a heavier nucleus. If the temperature is too low then the light nuclei do not have enough kinetic energy to overcome the electrostatic repulsion between the nuclei so fusion cannot take place. So high temperatures are needed in the order of 10 to the 7 Kelvin and these are found these temperatures are found in the cores of stars so at these high temperatures the nuclei have enough kinetic energy to overcome the electrostatic repulsion between the nuclei and so the nuclei can come close enough together with a strong nuclear force to act to fuse the nuclei both fission and fusion release energy both these processes release energy and that's because the mass of the products is less than the mass of the reactants. So that means in both these processes mass is being lost and so this mass is being converted into energy which is the energy that's released. This graph is showing you the binding energy per nucleon against the nucleon number. So binding energy per nucleon is the average energy needed to separate each nucleon from the nucleus. It also represents the average energy that is released when each nucleon is added to the nucleus. Iron 56 has the maximum binding energy per nucleon and fission occurs for nuclei that are above iron 56 and fusion occurs for nuclei below iron 56 and that's because in both these processes you can see that the binding energy of the product is greater than the binding energy of the reactants and as a result net energy is released in both these processes. So if we consider the fusion reaction and the fission reaction, if we wanted to separate out the nucleons that make up the reactants we would need to add energy or supply energy. But then if we want to make the products from the nucleons, energy would be released. And in both these processes, more energy is released to form the products from the separated nucleons than the energy that was supplied to separate out the nucleons from the reacting nuclei and as a result both processes release energy. If fission was to occur before iron 56 and fusion was to occur after iron 56 then you would see that the binding energy of the products 
would be less than the binding energy of the reactants. And as a result, energy would not be released from these processes. And so these processes would not be possible. So the reason why is you would need to supply more energy in both these processes to separate out the nucleons from the reactants than the energy that would be released to form the products from the separated nucleons. So overall, energy is not being released from these processes. Nuclear fusion occurs in stars, in the cores of the stars. And this is how stars get their energy, the light and heat they emit. A peaceful use of nuclear fission would be in nuclear power stations to generate electricity. But a destructive use of fission and fusion are bombs, atomic bombs and hydrogen bombs.